Let's have a look at how to analyze circuits that contain resistors and inductors. So I have an example here where we have a current source uh, and a resistor and an inductor. And the additional information that we have is that the current source turns off uh, at a particular time at t equals zero. So writing that kind of precisely, we have that there's an initial current I naught, which is generated for uh, times less than zero. Um, and then it turns off, basically goes to zero uh, for positive values of time. And so we would like to analyze this circuit. So we need to do this in two steps, uh, basically because we have a change in current, we need to analyze the initial condition for, for what that current is doing. Uh, and then we need to analyze the, the behavior when it changes. So uh, looking at the initial condition, so um, initially, Uh, we need to analyze the steady state behavior uh, for uh, I of T, the current supplied by a source, uh, equal to just some, some number I naught. So if we draw what this circuit will look like under steady state conditions, then we will have the following. So the steady state behavior will be, in the beginning, will be uh, just a basic current source with fixed current I naught. Uh, there was a resistor R. Uh, and then our inductor, if we think back to our previous video, our inductor under steady state conditions just becomes a short circuit. Note, the inductor is a short circuit under steady state DC which is what we have here. Uh, so the inductor just becomes a short circuit. And what we need to analyze for an inductor is what will be the initial current that will be flowing uh, when we turn and analyze the, uh, the transient response. Basically, how does this circuit behave when we turn the power off? So the initial current that will flow through this inductor here, uh, this circuit's kind of trivial. Obviously, the initial current here is I naught, right? The, current that is supplied by this source will obviously flow through the short. And none of it will flow through the resistor. We'll take the path of least resistance. This is zero ohms resistance, so it will flow through there. Uh, so we know that the initial current in the inductor is the same as the current from the source. If you had a more complicated circuit, you need to actually do some analysis here. Uh, but in this case, it's really simple, so we just read it off directly. Uh, then second step is uh, that we need to analyze the transient behavior. So transient is the opposite of steady state. So the transient behavior, that means what happens uh, as a function of time. Analyze the transient behavior when the source switches. So when the source switches off, right, it's defined in our problem statement as being uh, zero amps of current will flow. So if you have zero amps, then you have a uh, open circuit, right? No current means that that part is disconnected. So open circuit on that side. So the circuit that we are analyzing will have kind of open circuit here, not really doing anything. We have a resistor. And we have an inductor. Uh, and we have an additional piece of information about this inductor. We know that the initial current at time zero is that number that we just solved in the previous step. So we have this circuit here. It's basically just the resistor and the inductor. Uh, this bit out here, this bit out here will have no consequence. There's nothing there. Uh, so it's just the resistor and the inductor.
So I'm just going to clean up that drawing a little bit. So it's, it is literally these two elements. R and L, where we specify an initial current I0, um, I of 0, so I of time of 0 is equal to, um, to I0, the number that we just solved for. Uh, and we would like to analyze what is the current in this loop, uh, and also we should define a voltage um, across our inductor. So how do we analyze this circuit? Well, same uh, kind of methods as we have previously been using. So here we have a loop, so let's use Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop. So I will have, um, due to the resistor, I will have a voltage of I times R, um, and due to the inductor, I will have a voltage of VL. Uh, however, we know that inductors have the definition that their voltage is L times di dt. Uh, so substitute uh, VL in equation number, let's label this one here as equation number one. So substituting VL into there, then we will get I times R plus L di dt uh, is equal to zero. Now let's have a look at this equation here. So we have an equation which has an unknown variable I, so I is our unknown, um, and it involves the function, uh, the unknown function i, and also the derivative of this unknown function. So this is a differential equation. This is a differential equation. Um, and actually it's a first order differential equation because the highest order of derivative that appears is uh, the first order derivative. Uh, so this is a differential equation, um, more specifically, more specifically, a first order uh, differential equation, DE for differential equation, more specifically a first order differential equation. So in the next videos, I will look at a few ways that you can go about solving a differential equation like this one.